Good afternoon. Uh, this is Janet Dunlop. I'm superintendent at Broken Arrow Schools. It is March 30th, and as promised, I am giving the second of our uh, video updates. It's hard to believe that it's been an, only a week since all of this started, um, since spring break, and um, as I said, we're going to continue to give updates. It'll either be me or one of our instructional team or someone on our team that will continue to give updates, and then also your principal at your site if you're one of our parents or students. Um, in this update, I'm gonna cover specific things. You know, last time we were just trying to get um, answers on instruction and get kids fed, uh, those, those big priorities. This time, we're gonna start diving into some of the other details that I know are on your mind, like graduation prom. You know, we, we see your, your messages and we know that those are concerns of yours. So uh, we'll talk about instruction uh, starting April 6th. We'll talk about, talk about prom, we'll talk about graduation, uh, the teacher of the year ceremony, uh, retrieving your items from sites, uh, continued food service, and then we'll talk a little bit about some celebrations. I think in this time it's important to remember that there are some wonderful things happening as well. So let's go ahead and kick off with instruction. Um, so we will begin distance learning on April 6th. Uh, we are getting ready. I think we've already submitted our plan to the State Department. We had to submit a plan of distance learning uh, to be able to get waivers on using some funds. So our instructional team has worked, oh my gosh, around the clock to get that ready so that we could submit it immediately. And our teachers are currently uh, working and putting plans together. A lot of them have reached out through through video, through Facebook, oh my gosh, they they love our kids and they're they're reaching out and continuing instruction even in this downtime. So kudos to you teachers who are doing that. I mean, the, the love you have for your kids is amazing. Um, uh, secondly, so prom, um, it, it breaks my heart, um, but because prom is scheduled for May 2nd and because the social distancing has now been extended to, to April 30th, there's no way we can have a prom. Um, not only is it uh, not possible to continue to have the prom um, at this sooner date, but it's it's they've said now that you know it's a misdemeanor to be out for any other reason other than going to the grocery store, or getting pharmacy, or if you're in one of those necessary fields uh, like you know nursing or something where you have to go to work. So we cannot have a prom. Um, we'll we'll see what we can do. I know that our um, student activities folks are putting together some ideas on how we can continue to have a celebration and uh, later. But right now we've got to let this pass and make sure we keep everyone healthy. Um, you know that safer at home order by Governor uh, Stitt has has changed changed the game for everyone. Um, not only that, all of our non-essential businesses are closed, so we can't even get anywhere in anywhere. Uh, and lastly, all of our schools are closed and um, the, the state has ordered that all sports and activities are closed. So we can't, we can't have those activities. Okay, so now we'll talk about graduation. And so I know that many of you said, if, well, why don't you postpone? Why don't you reschedule? So we would love to do that. And we are, we're looking at dates on how we can possibly do that. Here's the problem is how do you reschedule a date when you don't know when it's going to end? And, and the last thing we want to do, last thing I want to do, is make a promise of a date and then it doesn't happen. That's, that's not fair to anyone. It's certainly not fair to these graduates and their families this year. So uh, what we are doing right now is we're, we're attempting to find a backup date in the summer sometime. Um, but right now, with the status of the pandemic, um, we don't know what that time will be. We're looking at that. You can imagine with a... a, a a, um, a, a big venue like be okay it, it's not it doesn't happen quickly so give us some time be patient it's we're, we're technically five days into this so give us some time to do that um, what I will promise you is that we will have some sort of virtual celebration to celebrate our students um, prior to anything else um, that is going to happen and um, we're planning that as we speak and our amazing video team is putting that together so that's a promise I will make to you um, as we know more I'll continue to update you or you will you'll hear um, okay so the next um, piece is teacher of the year um, unfortunately teacher of the year also falls in that window of time that we have to cancel it um, so Again, we figured out a way through video. Our amazing communications team um, and public relations teams has, has figured out a way to do that virtually. 
Um, so those, uh, those videos and that way that we're going to recognize our Teacher of the Year and then finally announce it, we'll roll out, it'll start April 6th. So keep your eye on our website and, and keep your eye on um, all of the social media ch uh, channels that you use because you'll start seeing those, those roll out. Um, next, retrieving items from sites. Okay, please be patient with us, because remember, you know, each time we have someone in one of our sites, if you touch any surface at all, or even if you just walk in, they're now saying that this might be airborne. We have to decontaminate anything, everything. So you can imagine if we have 19,430-odd students, how crazy that would be to try to get all those folks into the building. So we're trying to figure out a way to do that um, through some sort of curbside service. I do know that athletics and fine arts have, um, have a plan in place and they're going to begin this process at, on April 6th. So you'll be hearing something from them if you are an athlete or if you're involved in fine arts. Um, so again, be patient. We will have a plan, we'll figure it out, um, but uh, we, we won't be able to do it by bringing everyone into our buildings. Um, okay, so food service, um, our food service team. First of all, I can't thank these ladies and gentlemen enough because they, you know, you think about people at the front lines, they're, they're putting their own health um, on the line to make sure that our children have food on the table. Can't thank them enough for that. We're gonna continue to tweak the way we do that because we are serving, let me look at my number here, we are serving an average of 1,400 meals a day. So with that type of exposure, we're gonna to continue to look at ways to tweak that to make, keep, make sure and keep not only your family safe, but um, our servers safe. Um, I've seen several questions online about why don't we um, allow parents to pick up the meals without the kids that other districts are able to do that. You know, that's all tied into uh, federal funds and how we do child nutrition. Um, some, some districts are uh, district-wide uh, free and reduced lunch and they're able to have some more flexibility than we are. We have applied for that waiver and we're in the process of waiting to see if we can get it. If we can get that waiver, then we will change it and parents, you can come and get the meals without your child present. So be patient. We have filed for it. We're waiting to hear that response. Um, so again, uh, we're serving about 1,400 meals a day. Um, we, we're pretty adamant that we like to try to get hot meals to, to students, and that's one of the reasons why we're not handing out like five days worth of food. Um, you know, a five-day-old sandwich is pretty yuck. Um, but, you know, we're open to suggestions. If, if, if you think that you would rather have five days of food, reach out to your principal and, and let them know that, and let, let's see how we might be able to, to change that. Um, also, if you're struggling trying to get your, your student uh, up to the, to the school or to the site to get food, um, we are going to post numbers of churches, local churches, that are willing to give students rides. And so we'll give them a ride to the, the food site and then bring them back home. Um, and that will be posted on our website. So thank you to our church partners who are doing that. Uh, today we have added Timber Ridge as a food site and jo Johanna Wood and Cam Camina Villa. So I urge you, uh, if you live in one of those neighborhoods, please take advantage of this. It's, it's a wonderful service to, to our students and to our families of a way to make sure and keep that, those meals and that food constant. And as I said, they're hot meals. It's not, it's not just cold food throw, thrown together. Um, uh, next, um, so updates from, uh, from athletics, um, academics, and all of our school sites. Uh, those will begin next. So you'll start hearing from them directly. It may be, not be that you'll hear from me every time. We're going to start sharing, sharing this load, and you need to hear directly from the folks that are closest to that, that information. And that will, um, that will all start beginning uh, April 6th. So our, our principals have already been working with communications to film those welcome back videos, and you'll start hearing from your principals from athletics and academics starting then. Um, as we have major developments, uh, trust me, we'll continue to, to communicate. We want to make sure and keep you posted. Um, finally, I'm going to end this, uh, you know, in this, in this time of unrest and, and um, a lot of sadness. Uh, I think we have to remember to celebrate. 
Uh, so I do want to, first of all, celebrate our child nutrition uh, folks because as at this point in one week, they have served almost 7,000 meals. And that is not in a school site. That's going out in our community. That's amazing. It's amazing the work they do and they do it with a smile on their face and, and make our families and our children feel loved. And I, I can't thank them enough for that. Um, another little celebration, not a little celebration, huge. Our girls wrestling team was named, you know, they're the first wrestling team in Oklahoma. And they were just named as the number 12 wrestling program in the United States. Talk about coming out of the gate, <laughs> strong and amazing. So congratulations, ladies. I am so proud of you, incredible work. Our boys wrestling 17th in the country. So we are a wrestling Mecca and we are proud of that. Um, also a little shout out to, to uh, Christy Mowry from the high school. She won the uh, PSO First Robotics Grant this last week. So proud of you as well, going out there and getting money to, so that we can continue to serve our students well. Um, as I close, just again, thank you all for your patience and your support of the schools um, and for our students. We're gonna, we're gonna get through this together and we'll make sure that, that no student falls through the cracks. We have got to work together Teachers, thank you for the work that you're doing in this in this um, in between time. It's important that at this point we worry about kids learning. Let's let's not worry about um, who who is uh, uh, turned in what when. Let's just make sure that the students learn what they need to, so that we can start next year and hit the ground running. Because that's what we're here for. It's it's about student learning and making sure that they're successful. Um, love that we're such an inc incredible uh, Broken Arrow family. We take care of each other, and, and that's what makes our, our district home. So thank you.